Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Now San Diego Comic Con 2017 is finally over and Sideshow Collectibles as well as a lot of other companies showed off a lot of cool stuff during this event. And I wanted to give you guys my top 5 picks uh, in terms of statues that were on display at this Comic Con. Uh, so sit back and relax and I hope that you'll enjoy this uh, video here and uh, we'll just start right out with number 5. Alright, so in 5th place I've chosen the Mouth of Sauron statue by Weta. It's a 1-6 to six scale statue made from polystone and as, as you can see he's just sitting here on top of his mount. And I don't really know what it is that I like about this piece really, it's, it's difficult for me to put a finger on it. It might also be a bit of nostalgia going on here because of course I'm a big big fan of the movies. And it's nice to see new stuff coming out even this many years after the movies premiered. Um, that's always nice, I think. But Weta is a very nice company. They do awesome stuff. Their stuff always rises up in value and are very sought after. So it's always worth uh, your attention to kind of keep an eye out of what they're doing. And I, I do really love the pose here with the horse um, stepping kind of backwards. It looks very realistic somehow, uh, very convincing. And it's a nice representation of this character that I'm sure that a lot of people out there really like. Um, he looks very intimidating, as he should, and Weta did an awesome job here. And as number 4, I've chosen a very special piece that might actually have flown under the radar for most people. This is the Ragnarok Thor 18-inch diorama created by Figurama Collectors. This is a completely different take on Thor. It's not related to Marvel in any way. Uh, it's a completely separate comic book series and it's more based in the actual Norse mythology. But as you can see, Thor does look a bit strange and that's because he's actually a zombie. <laughs> that sounds crazy, but if you actually read the comics, it's gonna make sense to you. The comic book series is called Ragnarok, so it takes place in a world that's kind of gone to shit. Um, the whole series is, is written by uh, the very famous author, Walt Simonson, who also did a very, very popular run on Thor for Marvel. Uh, but this is complete, completely unrelated, it's its own thing, um, it has its own tone and expression and everything, it, it's definitely worth checking out. But what I do like about this piece it's, is that it's the first piece coming from Figurama related to this Ragnarok universe, so it's kind of like a key piece, and it's a beautiful representation of Thor here on top of this uh, rocky cliff thingy, surrounded by, by these um, foes that he's kind of just... Uh, beating the crap out of. And I feel that it's a beautiful concept here and it's perfectly executed as a diorama. Uh, Figurama did an awesome job with this, I feel. So yeah, um, I basically love everything about this piece, the design, the, 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 the level of details and everything. Um, it has a nice balance, it has a nice symmetry going on here in, in, the, in the way that it's put together. So it's definitely worth checking out. And if you haven't heard about the comic book series, I can recommend that you go and check that out because it's very, very interesting. All right, so my third pick has got to be the new Red Sonja premium format by Sideshow Collectibles. I don't exactly know what it is with Sideshow and Red Sonja. They must really, really love this character a lot because this is actually the third premium format of Red Sonja that we see. I have the previous one, the second one, and I really, really love that one. And I do feel that this piece here, the third one, is in that same league, in a league of its own compared to many of the other premium formats that we see from Sideshow. Everything about this piece, I feel, is just close to perfection. The sculpt, the design, the pose, uh, the expression of the piece, and just the details and everything. It's just so very convincing. It looks very realistic also, just like the previous premium format, but she looks like a completely different person though. Um, and I just really love this rendition of her. It's, it's very suitable, I think, to this character. Um, and even though I have the second version, I would even consider getting this one because it's just that good. So it's definitely worth the attention of collectors. I hope they'll have a great success selling this piece here because it's definitely worth people's attention, I think. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece and it's just on a very, very high level. All 
Alright, so my second pick might actually come as a surprise for some of you. Um, it is the Wolverine Premium Format from Sideshow Collectibles. It was displayed at the convention unpainted because it's just that early in the development process that they haven't even had time to paint it yet. But from what I can see right away, to me this is very very uh, good looking. Um, I must admit that Wolverine is one of my favorite superheroes. I love his attitude, his appearance and even his costume. Um, and I, feel, I have always felt that Sideshow kind of owed it to collectors and fans of Wolverine to create that perfect rendition of him. And I do feel that we are actually close to, to the mark with this piece here. Um, the pose is just the very iconic one for Wolverine. Um, his physique is perfect, I think he looks bulky and very muscular. Uh, and he also has this animalistic quality to him. The suit looks like a modern take on the suit, which is fine by me. I'm just hoping that we'll see this uh, as the classical yellow and blue suit. Um, and if that is the case, this might actually be a piece that could find its way into my collection, because I still feel that I, I need to own that perfect rendition of Wolverine. Alright, so my top pick from this year's San Diego Comic Con is the Boba Fett life-size bust by Sideshow Collectibles. And I'm sure you're going to be surprised by that uh, because this piece has been getting kind of a mixed reaction within the collecting community. People have been pointing out some flaws about this piece, uh, that he has too short of a neck, as if his helmet is going all the way down to his shoulders. And if you do compare him to the old life-size bust, the one I actually have in my collection, you do see that the neck on the old one is much more long compared to this one. Uh, but in that case, some people have actually argued that the old one has too long a neck. So, so what can I say? And if you do go over the movie scenes, you'll see kind of both. So I do feel that that argument as a whole kind of cancels itself out. I don't really feel that it is a strong argument against this piece here. I feel that this is a great representation. He looks very um, much like he does in the movies, I think. So anyone deciding to get this piece are going to have an amazing collectible in their collection. Something that people or guests that they have over will kind of immediately uh, notice. And it's really just a centerpiece, I think. Something that really grabs the attention of anyone looking at a collection, I think. Uh, and in many ways, I feel that it is an upgrade compared to the old piece. It has better battle damage. Um, the whole the de the details are better. It even has a jetpack on the back. I'm not really sure what that looks like. It's gonna be a massive piece, but um, yeah, I haven't seen clear footage of that. Uh, but the paint application, the use of color tones here is just perfect. I think it's very close to what you see on screen. I think, and in my opinion, clearly an upgrade to the old Boba Fett life size bust by Sideshow. I'm not gonna get it myself. I think uh, it's probably going to be too expensive for me. Uh, and also, I have the original bust, and it's actually signed by Jeremy Bullock. So, it's going to be difficult for me to get rid of that one and get this one instead. Um, the, the old one just simply is so dear to me because I met Jeremy Bullock, and he signed it, he touched it. That's just, yeah, I have a lot of feelings put into that piece, I think. So, yeah, it might come as a surprise that I chose this one, uh, I'm sure. But I do really feel that this is one of the pieces that kind of took my attention. It kind of grew on me day by day. Um, in the beginning, I wasn't that blown away, but as as more as long as I, every time I looked at this piece, I got even more and more sold from time to time. So yeah, um, I ended up considering this one of my favorites from this year's San Diego Comic Con. All right, guys. So that's my top five. I'm sure that you disagree with me. This is just my personal take on it. Uh, but I'd love to hear what your top 5 or top 10 or whatever is from the Comic Con. I tried to only put in new stuff, uh, p stuff that we hadn't seen before. Um, so I hope you found this interesting and that my, my points came across. Um, but do leave me your thoughts below. And of course, remember to subscribe and like this video uh, so that I can keep doing content in the future. It really helps me with all the support. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in my next video.